Hello, my name is Steve Pittman, and this is an installment of Longmont Public Media's Candidate Interview Series. I'm here with Diane Christ, a candidate for Longmont City Council as a representative from Ward 1. The incumbent from Ward 1, Tim Waters, is not running for re-election. Hello and welcome, Diane. Hello, Steve. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. You'll have time for a summation at the end, but since our time is limited, I'm going to start right off with our first question. Okay. If you are elected, what is the biggest issue you want to address? And is that issue within the control of city council, or is it something that requires a ballot measure or state level action? The biggest issue I want to address, uh, well, let me give a little backstory. We have uh, three at-large seats on the city council and we have three ward seats. That's one for each ward, ward one, ward three, and ward two. And um, I think the big issue that, that got me to run for the ward seat uh, is the idea that no one is really advocating for their neighborhoods. It seems like everyone is looking at the city as a whole in a centralized fashion. But I'm a big believer that not only do we start with family, but after we're you know satisfied with family, we work into our neighborhood and then community. And uh, I see, particularly on the northeast side of town, that we've become a little disjointed with the growth that we've had and... Um, and we need a little more support in our commercial areas as well. So I'm advocating for community commercial centers to bring the neighborhood together, to foster more economic and business development in our area, and also to give a place for people to hang out. On the Northeast side, we don't very often get town, downtown to, to some of the events down here. It's actually 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes to get all the way down here. And it's just something that I think will bring our city together and also is necessary um, as our transportation changes. Uh, we've committed to Vision Zero and we really need to have more local traffic. I mean, keep our traffic local rather than uh, drive across town uh, as a habit. I think people will be more satisfied, especially if they have uh, city services easily available to them. Uh, we were talking about recreation and library extensions, and I think that's very much needed on the northeast side of town. Um, and my ward actually goes south and um, to the east of Weld County Road. And all through there, we have a, a lack of available transportation or alternative transportation, but we're building more destinations without any ability for people to get there. We have some senior living out on our area and we have um, some high density that's coming in and people need to be able to access some city services and rather than try to bring all the housing downtown which you know we don't have the land for that we need to bring the services out to where people are living so um that's that's my plan for ward one and the reason why i'm running and some of that is uh, under the purview of the city council and some of it would just be supported through private partnership private public partnerships in the area, and and the rest would be something we'd have to work on as a community. Well, thank you. That's a good place to stop. Um, so second question, there are several <clears throat> safety and crime reduction measures which the public has asked for, such as Vision Zero that you mentioned, restorative justice and a larger police force. Which of these solutions do you think are effective and what else should the city council do? Well, that's a very thoughtful question. I, I'll, I'll front for Vision Zero first. I'm the vice chair of the Transportation uh, Advisory Board in Longmont. And when we saw Vision Zero on the list, we very much wanted to see it implemented. Uh, Vision Zero, we're, first of all, let me say, we're in favor of keeping our cars. We're not trying to get anybody out of their cars. But we are trying to make travel safer and just more pleasant. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, Okay, so the th idea is to get commuter and through traffic to go around the city on the major thoroughfares. And then um, traffic in the neighborhoods would be able to stay at 25 miles an hour, which is what residential uh, speed limits are. 
you know, nowadays, sometimes you get on, on the street and you're trying to go 25, like it's posted and people are trying to go 40 miles an hour around you. So you, with vision zero, the idea is you would not have that pressure and it would be a safer, safer for pedestrians, safer for children, safer for bicyclists, and also safer for, uh, motor vehicle drivers, because, uh, we're seeing just a lot of accidents. And uh, if you want more information on this, the uh, transportation board meets on October 9th, and that's the day that we get the crash report and it will st stand your hair on end when you, when you hear how many accidents are in town. So that's the Vision Zero initiative. And re refresh my memory. Oh, you know, yesterday I actually had a nice um, North business uh, owner meeting with public safety officials. And I was uh, very interested to hear, I don't know if everybody knows that we have 10 police officers on a day shift and six police officers on a night shift. Uh, the police officers were very, um, they gave a very good presentation. They were uh, very kind, very community oriented. And I say we have some of the best police officers in the nation. Uh, we probably need more of them. And they're saying that their police force is getting younger so uh, we need to make sure we have good police development. But I also think having community centers where there, there's kind of an epicenter for them to, to program drive-bys would be helpful. Uh, gives them uh, optics on where they think, you know, where problems could occur. And uh, in talking with them, they're all already aware of properties where, you know, where um, people hang out, where there's, you know, a lot of dark corners and mayhem can occur. So I feel very confident in our police force and we need to support them as much as possible. Now, what was the third thing you mentioned? Oh, well, that, that's it. We run out of time. Okay. Well, but thank you. That was a good answer. Okay. Thanks. So third question, mm -hmm. what is your vision for the future of Longmont's transportation network of vehicles, streets, sidewalks, and multi-use paths? Well, this is this is a question made just for me. I ran for office in 2021 uh, because I was upset that people weren't talking about the Hyperloop, which is a statewide transportation solution. It's a fifth mode of, of transportation, so it doesn't eliminate any of these any of these others that you mentioned. And since that time, since um, the 2021 election, Swiss Pod has uh, is announced and is building a Hyperloop test track in Pueblo, Colorado. And um, this was at TTCI, which then changed their name to MXV, if you want to look it up online. And MXV has put out a few videos of everything they've done. <clears throat> they're up to 500 million in investment. And um, they're not only just working on the Hyperloop, but they're also working on making rail faster and safer because Physically speaking, just the physics involved, trains can't go faster than 140 miles an hour, 145. Um, they just, they vibrate too much. So um, right now, if we were to use just rail from Longmont to Denver, it would be an hour's commute. And that's just not going to be adequate in the long haul. So we need to keep rail more regional. We need to have something statewide. And the Hyperloop is meant to go from Pueblo to Cheyenne and from DIA out to Vail and all the areas that we really need um, some statewide help. So um, for the next four years, we need to work on local transportation. And something that we've done on the transportation board is, you know, we've, we've asked for Vision Zero, but also we're um, instituting microtransit, which is a system, uh, it's a bus. Um, I always say it's a a call them in and, and they tell you to meet me on the corner of close and soon because they try to aggregate as many riders as they can at once, but um, make each trip a 15 minute pickup and a 15 minute to your destination. And there would be a small fee, but I, I think we're thinking one to three dollars each way. It seems really affordable if you're going door to door to your destination and, you know, on demand. And one of the problems we've had with RTD is they really do regional much better than they do local. You know, the buses are much bigger than our long monsters that we used to have. And, uh, and you know, they don't, ha they can't do as many routes. And uh, particularly on the Northeast side, we have two routes and um, the f they're not sure they can support them. And, and the one route doesn't go to where the high density housing is. So um, if you are elderly or infirm, you know, if you have an accident or injury, 
or just young, you know, if you're young, I think you could walk to it, but not everyone can access that service at this time. Thank you. That was a great answer. So fourth question. The high cost of housing makes it difficult for service workers to afford to live in Longmont. Do you believe that they should be able to? And how do you believe it would impact the lives of current residents if they could? That's an interesting twist on the question. So, um, my area of town, and particularly in my neighborhood, is a very multicultural area. I think we're over 50% persons of color, if you look at the demographics. And we don't really think that way in our neighborhood because we're all just a bunch of immigrant families. I'm second generation here. And um, so I also want to add that we have a 1% unemployment rate in my area. So we're also very industrious people. Um, and those that own their homes, um, often uh, some of them are, they're zoned to be duplexes. And a lot of those that are zoned to be duplexes do rent out to others. But the problem we're seeing is that they used to be able to rent maybe two bedrooms and a bath for $1,200. But now, um, just with property tax and only property tax being higher, they're having to raise their rates to $1,500 a month and not making any money on that. So really, if they were going to make the same $500 that they did at $1,200, they would have to raise to $1,900. And that's just not affordable anymore. So we're um, we're one of those, I think... Um, the city manager, Harold Dominguez, talked about, you know, the naturally occurring uh, uh, affordable housing that's in that area is diminishing, is what he said. And a lot of that is due to property tax. So we have to come to the table and talk about uh, a structural change to our property tax code. Uh, we had the Gallagher Amendment, and um, that put a break on it, but it wasn't really great policy. Well, I'm, I'm an accountant, and in our profession, we've been talking about, you know, how do we get the math to work out? We have some really good ideas. What we're, what we're trying to do is partner with policymakers just to figure out how to write the, the law, I guess, <laughs> to make it work so that the math works out. Um, but property taxes have got to be, uh, there's got to be another break on them, like Gallagher allowed. It wasn't perfect. Uh, we need something better. Uh, I'm not a fan of Proposition HH. It's a bit of a hot mess. Um, but if we could get the time to come up with something better, we have the ideas. Of we just need to write the policy. And I think that would really help with the um, affordable housing. And yes, I'm in favor of having all levels of workers in town. I think that's what makes a community. Thank you. So this question is, we're going to allow seven minutes, so I have to change okay. my timer. Well, this has been fun, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad. glad you're enjoying it. Um, there will be three measures on November's ballot. Do you think the public should support each and why? Okay. You will have two minutes and 20 seconds to comment on each measure. The first measure is 3C on new branch library and library funding. Okay. So... I think all taxpayers should have access to library and recreation services. In fact, I think they should have access to any um, taxpayer provided services. I think um, I'm against the measure at this time, and I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of the capital improvement projects in the city right now are, are coming in at double what they were anticipated, just because of inflation and supply chain issues. Now, um, the, the way this uh, fund accounting works is once you collect the money, you have to accumulate it in the fund until you have enough to do the project. And um, the city has had to scramble in a few places to you know, do, just do repairs where they wanted to do full restoration because they didn't have the funds for that. And I think um, if we pass these now, we're going to find that what we're asking for is not going to support the actual projects. I think we need to put it off for about three years, actually. In the meantime... How do people get services? I'm advocating for extension services, and that means like a storefront or, you know, on our side of town, we have a blighted Safeway. We'd love to see the city rent it, put a library extension. That means a computer where you can order your supplies and a van brings them up to drop them off there and you pick them up in your neighborhood. And um, we have a guy on, on Main and um, 
where the old uh, uh, big five, he's in their parking lot and he has the weight pile and people can come and just walk up and use his weights. Well, it'd be nice to give him a place to stay over the winter, I think. And there's other rec recreation services in that area. And if the city were to subsidize, and I'm not big on subsidies, but in this case, it'd be five years before they came came up to a capital improvement type expense. You know, they subsidize, say, a drop-in rate at a at a local business that offers recreation. That okay. would be helpful. Let's move on to the second measure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Second measure is 3D, an arts and entertainment center. Okay. Well, I've heard good things about um, arts and entertainment, but I sat through the the program about the sugar mill, which I think is what they where they want to put uh, between the steam and the sugar mill building. And it seems like there's a lot that needs to happen there. So, and then also, uh, I believe there's a contingency that the um, arts and entertainment is coming up with maybe... 36, and then they're expecting 43 from the uh, city, and I believe those are millions of dollars. Um, and I think, once again, I'm saying property taxes, we need to get those situated first. So I'm in favor of a cultural center. I think it'll be fantastic, especially when we have transportation to it. Um, but I think raising taxes, property taxes, or sales taxes at this time are not advised. It was about three years. People are still, small businesses are still recovering from COVID. Uh, it's just clear. And you need to give them time to do that. Thank you. So the third measure is 3E, new recreation facilities. Okay. And is that the YMCA? That we're talking uh, it includes that, but it's a new uh, recreation center on the southwest uh, oh, okay. side of Long Island. Well, I kind of refer to my... 3C answer. Once again, um, one of the problems with the YMCA, and um, I've heard I've heard from my people in my area that they really love the pool at Centennial. They, they really love the YMCA for exercising. They hate to see either one of them go. I think one of the reasons why that is not so viable for the whole city is that Ninth Avenue goes east to west but it's a little trickier to drive in that it narrows in places and the transportation from the west side to the east side is is a bit tricky. And like I said, I'd like to see that more up on 17th or on that blighted Safeway building because 17th is a uh, more major, you know, arch, arch, artery, as they say, um, where you can easily get all the way from Weld County Road to all the way out to Airport Road. So it's really a lot more available for many more neighborhoods than where they're um, suggesting these these be placed. And I have to give it to the Parks and Recreation Department. They did reach out to the Transportation Board. We meet at the same time, and same day and same time of the month. So we don't get to inter interact with each other much. And I was just explaining that I think with Vision Zero, we need to reduce uh, cross-town travel. And I think we really need to look at placing these within neighborhoods where they can walk, bike, or have short 25 mile an hour trips to to do this. And and I'm thinking about if you remember what the mall was like, where you you know mom and dad can take the kids over and they can play some indoor soccer, or maybe there's indoor pickleball courts because that building is big enough for that. And then you can get your grocery shopping done, and you can you know stop at the uh, mailbox if you've got postal there, or you can stop at a salon, or you can stop and have dinner before you go home, and you've really gotten five things done in one one transportation um, destination. So I, I um, say I think it's not time to raise taxes at this time. Give us about three years. So I'm not fond of these initiatives, but I like where they're going. So I, I support their initiative. I just don't support the <laughs> Time. Pass passing of that at this time. Yes. Thank you. So we have about a minute and 45 seconds left mm -hmm. if you'd like to deliver any final remarks. I would. I I think one of the things that I hear around town, not just in my ward, is um, that all of our children are moving away. And I think as a community, we would like to redevelop and rebuild Longmont the way we loved it, the way we all have always loved Longmont, so our children can stay here, but also prosper. And I think there's 
a few facets to that. I think we need to really look at the structure and fabric of our neighborhoods and communities. Um, we really need to come together as a community, not be so divisive. And there is a there is a middle road there. I I think on all these on all these topics, and um, build places where the young people want to go, where they have some entertainment available to them. Um, in a safe environment, which is, you know, close to home, um, where it's easily policed. Um, and police officers also need to be a member of the community. I know um, we also, when we discussed uh, the issues on the north side with the police officers, that there's only one police officer who works here that also lives here. And I would like to see, I'm not saying that they have have to live here if they work here, but I'd like to see more police officers live here, even if they're Weld County police officers and they want to, you know, live different than where they work. But it just, it just when my kids were young, it was helpful to have that presence in the neighborhood. Well, I, I want to thank you for your time here oh today. I, I thought this was great, and I really appreciate you being here. Well, you've just been lovely. Thank you, Steve.